I am feeling so inspired. I went to a metalworking workshop this past weekend and I made a cute little mushroom, but everybody else was wearing these super cute overalls and like a little kid at the candy store, I was like, mommy, I want one. I'm mummy, I think in this scenario, which means I'm going to have to make myself a set of overalls. Now your standard overalls, lovely, very practical, utilitarian, but what if art teacher vibes? I have a bunch of this green linen that I did not use up on a prior project. And I think today's the day we are going to go for it. It's so funny. I feel like most of my projects I spend months thinking about and executing. In fact, I am in the middle of three separate months, months, months long projects. And today I was like, no, I just, I just want to make something off the cuff. And I guess this is what we're doing. We're going to make a set of overalls ish out of this green linen. I think that'll be nice and comfy. It'll match all my plants in my room very nicely. So let's get to it. Now, I have a number of different inspirations in no particular order that I'm hoping to implement and we'll see if we successfully get there. One of them is these 16th century German midwives. They have this cool over apron that they wear. And I think that the top of that with the string and like the gathered panel in the front, I think would be a really cool top to an overall and then have the excess fabric go down over the hips and cover. Now starting off with, I think I do need to get the size. I've clearly pre-washed this because I can see the zigzaggy edge and the sewn bottom. So that is great. I don't have to pre-wash the fabric. Go past me. Now let's see how wide this is. So this is about 21 and a half times two is 43 right? We are going to use this, I think, to make the two side panels. Now that apron that I mentioned, I feel like is usually one front panel and one back panel, potentially more if you're weaving with narrower widths of fabric. But when it comes to making the sort of U crotch shape that you need for pants, that's not super compatible. So I think instead, if we make it either side panel, side panel, that way we can have a center front seam, which I think won't be very visible in the, the pleating of the front. Not that it's, you can't have your front seam visible, but I don't know, for some reason I'm like, must hide the front seam. Alternatively, we could just do four panels, front, front, back, back. We'll see. I'll, I'll start playing around with it and just going for it. I'm sure that there are tons of absolutely beautiful patterns online that I could buy that would be just perfect for this. But I don't know, my, my muse says, go for it. And who am I to deny my inner muse? We're just gonna, just kind of run with it and see what happens. They might not turn out very well. And that's okay. This is what we call uh, plausible deniability. Is it? Define plausible deniability. According to Wikipedia, plausible deniability is the ability of people to receive official information and not to represent by members of the organizational hierarchy. All right, I take that back. Mm, that's not a very good fit. I am not trying to deny that it might turn out poorly. I am saying up front, I'm warning you. It might turn out poorly because I'm just making it up as we go. But that's okay. That's the, that's the fun part, right? All right, so we have our known width of fabric. Now I think I'm gonna cut two lengths, the size of shoulder to floor. So let's go for that. I have my two panels now, which are approximately 43 inches wide, which is just the width of the fabric I have and about 60 inches long. I added a few extra inches just to help account for seam allowance and the hem at the bottom of the pants, et cetera, et cetera. I am the silliest goose because you know what I just realized? These aren't going to the shoulder. It's supposed to end kind of like at the bust, like those, those German aprons I mentioned. It's okay. You know what? 
for the extra space that I added onto the panel, we're just going to cut some strips off and use that to make the straps that we need. So it's fine, it's fine. Now for the bottom half though, I feel like I think I can get away with just leaving the legs as they are. They're just complete rectangles. And I think that what I can do from here is leave them as tubes, but I do need to cut out some to accommodate for the, the under the body seam line. There's a word for that. Inseam? Nope. Crotch depth? Really? There's not like a better word for that? Whatever the case, we need to cut that kind of U-shaped zone for your torso to sit in to your pants. So I need to figure out how much I want that to be. I feel like it's not usually very deep. I feel like it's usually, well, I don't know, I guess it's, it's kind of about the width of your body, isn't it? I don't make pants very often, so I have to like rethink about it every time. Yeah, let's go for it. I went ahead and measured my inseam, which is the most very dignified measurement to get, but got that inseam. So we're gonna put that on the leg here, add maybe an inch or two for the sake of seam allowance. And then we are going to mark this point here as the beginning of our kind of crotch area. Now from here up to make that U shape that you need for your, your undercarriage, we're going to just measure five inches in because five plus five equals 10, which was approximately what I measured my width of body to be. So I think if we do five, and I think it was a little bit more, but with seam allowance, it'll end up being more. So I, I, I think I think five is good. So we're just gonna kinda curve this out. I'm not gonna be fancy with it. And we're just going to carry this all the way up trying to stay relatively on grain. And I think because I am a nervous Nelly, I might actually be kind of like slightly generous with how I cut this. I have my first bit of scrap, which I'm going to set aside here. And then I think for the, the top portion here, I don't need it to be as long as I originally <laughs> cut it to be. I guess I could measure from crotch to like bust-ish. Theoretically, I only need about 20 inches. So do I wanna be brave and cut that now? I don't, no, because I'm not brave. I'm a coward. Okay, how about this? My straps. I know I want my straps to be about an inch wide, I feel like that looks nice, which means it needs to be two inches to cover the back of the front, which means we need three inches in order for it to have one seam, four inches if I want it to be seamed all sides. Right? I'll cut out one strap width of four inches. That should definitely keep me with enough height. I have one strip, which will be either waist ties or shoulder ties. So this will get folded up into a little one inch strip. I mean, I guess that's probably enough for both of the shoulder ties, depending on how extra I want to get with it. Like I do really like the tied shoulder look or alternatively, we could go with the tied ribbon, kind of like a lot of stays where it, it ends in the front and you just tie these two portions with, with a cute, you know, contrasting or matching ribbon. We have potential ideas. All right, we have pieces that will definitely be used for some part of this. And then now we need to look at the arm area, right? Because <laughs> if I take this and I try to just step into it right now, and this becomes, it's actually kind of more like there, then currently there isn't really a great armhole situation here. I do need to open up the fold right in here. Now that I think we have our basic shapes cut out, I'm going to go ahead and sew the inseam here and then iron it flat, do a top stitch just to fell the seam down, get everything very flat and lovely looking. And then I think I can put my two 
sides together and sew up that center all the way down the bottom and up the back. I have stitched the center front seam. I now have a pair of legs down here. Ta da! <laughs> uh, so I think next is to try it on and see just how much extra I still have at the top to verify that the side seam situation here works. Like just to get a sense of how things are fitting. Unfortunately, a very full dress is gonna make that difficult. So uh, one second. All right, I also very quickly, somewhere back here, tossed on some straps and did a little bit of pleating in the center back here. That way I it's not just flopping down. I have to control that in some way. So let's just get this hooked up. This is not the final configuration. It's just a way for me to easily hold the back where I need it to go. Yeah, so. So that is the back. Does that look right? Could be worse. Now for the front, the idea, the plan was to pleat it up and kind of something like that. I do feel a bit like I'm in a giant onesie. You know what else I kind of feel like? Gumby. All right, it took me a full 25 minutes of staring at myself to figure out what I wanted to do as there was going back and forth about whether or not I wanted to keep the kind of full bust section, but I think it looks so cool in my head and it looks kind of cool with enough styling. I know I just had that whole hmm, session in front of the mirror where I was trying to decide whether or not the, the pattern was working and I came to some conclusions, but I felt like I needed to give it a fair shake. I needed to really kind of actually pleat things up and properly pin some, some straps to really see what it would look like if I went through with my, my prior plan. And uh, this, is, this is what we have. Uh, it is ridiculously big. This is way, I wanted it to be oversized and loose and very comfy, but this is too much. I think I can solidly take like four inches out of each side and still have something that's very, very comfy and loose. I do actually kind of like the gathering at the back. I think maybe it's a little bit high, uh, but it's how high it is in order for the leg part to fit right. So I think I want to lower the back just a bit, but I think I can actually get away with doing the whole gathered panel situation in the back. I think that looks all right. The front, mm, I don't love it. It is kind of cute. It's giving kind of a little Game of Thrones, a little, maybe Padme. There's some potential to it. I think maybe in a lighter fabric. I chose something that's a very heavy weight linen. I wanted it to be very sturdy for, you know, working and for gardening and painting and, and uh, it's too much <laughs> with this weight of fabric. Mm -mm. We need to reduce the amount of fabric in the side. So I guess I'm going to have to add a signed seam. And I, I really want this to be kind of at upper bust level, kind of like a normal dress or overalls neckline. And I really want the straps to be more over here. I, I love a square neckline. I think it looks great. And this is just not what I want. I think it works. And I wanted to kind of show you the, the outcome of the pattern as per what we <laughs> I had shown you so far. I did bring out a little fabric belt to kind of demonstrate at least a little bit of that again kind of what that looks like and I do think it's 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 quite cute with a belt I think it gives it jumpsuit I still think the fabric's too heavy for that idea but in case this inspires you this is what this looks like I have finished taking in the side seam I did end up cutting more than I originally thought originally I thought it was going to be about 10 inches total, but I did a little bit more. So it was 14 total inches off of the hips. It was very, very large. It is still plenty oversized and I can still very easily pull it up over my hips without any sort of like zipper or side opening needed. Uh, but it, we took out some of the extra. I also went ahead and pinned where I wanted the front kind of 
flap to fit as well as a pin on the side to mark the waist and then did just kind of a swoopish cut to connect those two points. I did the same thing for the back, but I left the back a little bit wider since we're gonna pleat that down. And then for the other side, I just took that piece and placed it on the uh, other side to get a nice good mirror copy of the, the bit I cut off. So now we are ready to take our piece here. I think I'm gonna pleat up the back first, which if I get really ambitious, we might do just a little bit of smocking on the back, but we'll see. For now though, I do at the very least need to go ahead and pleat this up. Now, normally you could do that with a whole series of dots placed with marker or you know, a, a grid that you then very carefully use to pinch up all of your pieces to get the desired effect. Or you use something like a pleater machine, which is great, but I, I don't feel like doing either of those. Today, we are going to just kind of mash the fabric into place and hope that that works out. Like I feel like I can just kind of do this business. And is it going to be absolutely perfect and completely, you know, precise? <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's okay. I, I feel like it'll get the vague look I wanted with so much more speed, just so much faster than doing a bunch of dots and stuff. If you're doing a really intricate smocking pattern, then like there is a benefit to marking it all out super precisely. But we're, if I do smocking, it's not going to be something fancy and precise. It also helps that I'm just doing this one small, like, section. If I was doing a much bigger gown, I, I might want to go ahead and mark it out. And then once we've got it all pleated together here, kind of mushed in place, we are going to take a hopefully already prepared needle and thread and just kind of string it through all of them. Ideally, you would have all of these surface layered ones exactly the same height which they're not quite here, but that's okay. For a quick little funsy project, I'm not gonna stress about it too much. So I'm just gonna do a few layers. Now I've got my little top section here pleated up and ready. I think I am gonna go ahead and do my smocking stitches first. I think that it'll be a lot more difficult on myself as someone who's not very experienced with it to try and do that later. So I will, I will go ahead and get some of that going now. That's probably gonna be my sitting in front of the TV project for tonight. I finished adding that honeycomb stitching. So now I just need to release the guiding stitches that I had to help keep it pleated. And then it should open up and be very cute. So next up, I think I do wanna start handling some of all these, these raw edges. I'm gonna take a bunch of the scraps that I had cut off from making it not quite so overly big, you know, the, the bits I took out of the side, and I'm going to make some bindings to cover up all the raw edges up top here. I think I'm also going to add some pockets. I wasn't originally gonna do the little center front pocket here because I was originally going to gather it. I knew that wouldn't work very well together, but since it's not gathered anymore, I think I do want to go ahead and add a pocket in the front. I might make a heart shaped one. It's probably more practical if I make a square one, maybe with lots of lines through it so that I can put like paint brushes or other kind of small, like a pen, you know, small tools in that area. We'll see. So you know how I said that a rectangle would probably be the most practical? I decided to do the opposite of that and go extra impractical with my front. Well, I shouldn't say impractical because you know what? It is in fact, literally still practical. How flippin' cute is that? I did some, some leaves on that front bib area and I left some spots open you can actually, the back is probably a better way to see. So you can see how I stitched around the leaf itself and then I stitched the lines to make where the, the little pens can go. And I think it's so cute, so cute. Completely unnecessarily extra, 
but so flippin' cute. So now that I have my, my front bib leaf situation done, I am gonna add some buttons to the top here. I also added like a an extra reinforcement little patch here for the button because I felt like where I wanted it to be would be right where it was just one layer of fabric and I wanted a little bit more oomph for that zone. And then I've also stitched on not only, of course, those underarm side seam areas, but I also got this situation all sorted out. I think that is so cool. Uh, I like. I feel like the back is not usually where you put your, your decorative elements, but I think it looks really, really neat. I also added some pieces here to help kind of keep everything together. And we've got our straps. So the back is mostly taken care of. I do still need to add also some buttonholes. We'll see if I end up doing them by hand or by machine because part, part of me always wants to do it by machine because lazy, but part of me also wants to do it by hand because prettier. We'll see what I feel like doing in the moment. That is what has been really fun about this project so far is a lot of like, what do I feel like doing in the moment? And that's how I, I finish it off. Like all of these parts in the binding, I added little extra zigzaggy st stitches everywhere that the scrapped together binding was done just cause I felt like it was fun to have some, some extra stitchery there. And I'm really enjoying the do whatever I want with this. Since I have a little bit of a, a leafy theme going, I figure I'm gonna also make the front pockets leaf shape. Finally hem the bottom. I keep on like basting it, but then not actually stitching it. I need to stitch the bottom and then I think I'm done. I figured that before I add the elastic into both of the pant legs, I'd give you guys just a quick preview of what they look like. You know, if I had decided to not do the elastic and just left them as big legs. Now, to be fair, this is just one big rectangle and it is huge. This is unnecessarily large, uh, but I think that gathered up is quite cute. I dig a good gathered leg, I don't know. Now, the elastic that I chose for this is huge. That uh, two inch wide elastic here, huge. But unfortunately, the only other one I have is this quarter inch elastic. And unfortunately, I just don't think that this would have stood up to the task of trying to gather in that fabric down there. Like this is just a little bit too twee to do the job. So I have overdone it with my huge elastic, but it's a, it's a bold sort of look. I finished putting the elastic on the other leg. So now both of my feet highly elasticated, lovely. I also put the pocket on my hip down here and I am so happy with it. I also made sure to gather up the bottom edge and well not gather, I eased it in. Like I kind of like cinched it a little bit as I was ironing and as I was sewing so that there's just like a little bit more of a pouch type zone at the bottom of the pocket makes it so that if I put my hand in there or I put something in there, it's less of a flat sandwich and more of like a, a little bag that whatever it is is in there can fit into. I did a little tiny extra thing before putting the pocket on which is I put just a a little piece of reinforcement fabric and then did a buttonhole and that little piece of shenanigans is in fact where my microphone that you're hearing me with right now is gonna go. Usually I pin it somewhere on my person that's not visible and then run the microphone cord up here but it's kind of nice to have a dedicated spot for it to be on this it's super easy for me to pull the cord back out from that little buttonhole obviously a lot of you might not have that same need but you know if you still have like head bones that are on a cord you can like do that and you I always have the problem with cords hanging where like I'll go across a, a handle or a table edge or something and it'll pull the cord out of my ears. Or don't like it. So it's kind of fun. One of the fun things about making things is that you can do little like extra custom touches and I'm really into that. I'm really pleased with how both of the pockets turned out. This one I am so excited. I can put all sorts of things. Seam ripper. I can put pen. I can put uh, rotary cutter paintbrush. 
another paintbrush. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm very pleased that I think it's gonna be a very useful little pocket to put things in. And then the very last thing I did was add a little tie to the center back here, which you can kind of see. I put cute little leaves on the ends of the ties, which I think is very cute. I know I'm just continuing the theme, but it pleases me to no end. I can untie that and just tuck it in if I really wanted to have the more loose kind of smocked look that I originally was planning on. But I feel like this very comfy, like nice and easy breezy. But I feel like there's times where you'd like something to be a little bit more cinched in. I think it depends a lot on what shirt I'm wearing. I was debating on doing some belt loops or like a semi-attached belt that I could then tie. But now that like I kind of put this together, I was like, I actually kind of like the more smooth streamlined look of the front. I think if I had stuck with the much more gathered construction that I was thinking about earlier, then having that nice smooth belt in the middle, I think looked really, really good. But since this is smooth already, I don't really need a, you know, a, a panel of focus, I guess, in the middle. So yeah. I would say that I am all done with the sewing part of this and it is looking pretty dang cute, but I do feel like it is just, it's too clean. This is something that I wanted specifically for wearing while doing messy things. I've got painting and gardening and all sorts of things to do. And yes, it will eventually just naturally get its own beautiful patina through the nature of walking my dogs and doing the aforementioned projects. But you know what? I like to go ahead and give it a little bit of a head start. One of the things I've noticed is that I really love wearing what I want to wear whenever I'm doing my crafts and that sometimes results in having dresses that have paint or glue or various other craft materials on them. And I actually find that really helpful because now those dresses and things, I can very fearlessly run into future projects knowing, oh, it's already messy. It's already, you know, dirty clothes. And I don't have to fear getting them messed up because they're already messed up, but they're also still really cute even with splatters of paint and things like that. So I feel like there's something really nice about having clothes that you've given yourself mental permission to be as messy as you want to be in them. So that's part of the reason I wanted to do this is I just wanted to preemptively get them really messy, get them really fun and well, well worn and introduced into their, their new craft world. And rather than waiting and being kind of annoyed every time I accidentally got like a single splatter of paint on it, well, if we just start out with it having a bunch of splatters of paint, it's hard to be too mad about it. I also am hoping that since I'm gonna be having fun with decorating these, so to speak, a little bit, I wanna add just a little bit more around the leaves to help differentiate them from the body of the outfit. I think it looks quite nice having everything the same color, but I think this will be a really nice way to help the leaves stand out. Another really nice thing about knowing that I was going to be messing up this project anyways is that it gave me really great permission to use up all of these half used bits of thread I still had left over on all my bobbins, you know, from all my previous projects I've done in the last several months or even a couple of years at this point. So it was really neat to be able to just go through a bunch of them and help get this kind of cleaned out a bit. And here we are a few days later, actually almost a week later. When I say that I have worn this every day for about a week, washing it most days, in part I wanted to see how well the different paints and stains and dyes would take and various things. So I needed to wash them to test how wash safe they were. We are now, beautifully dirtied and I'm a very big fan. I've made a lot of projects that are pretty and sexy and made me feel cute. This one makes me feel like it's useful in a way that most of my things don't. Like I want to just wear this forever give me another week. I'm sure I'll change my mind. Something will catch my attention, but I, 
love this so much and I I feel like I'm really really excited that I have a project that I already know has gotten and will get a lot of use. Some things are very special occasion oriented and that's fine that's a beautiful thing but this is everyday oriented and I'm really really into that. So I know that some of you are like, why did you make it messy? I can always make another one if I want to make a fresh, clean, crisp version, maybe next summer. But I wanted to give my permission, myself permission to be as messy as possible. And part of what helps me do that is to just make it messy before I have a chance to accidentally make it messy. You get what I mean? When I'm wearing the polka dot bandana, I feel very much like one of those flowers from Mario. It's very cute. I do not mind it. Uh, although I was posting somewhere and someone was like, oh, it's like a Korok. You know, you're not wrong. I was so tempted to make myself a little leaf bandana, maybe with like the eyes and the little mouth like the Koroks. It'd be so cute and you have so many options. But <laughs> I decided not to go for it this time. Maybe later, maybe for Halloween. Now, one thing I know I'm gonna get comments about if I don't specifically tell you about it is how you're gonna go to the bathroom. I recognize that some folks just don't wear overalls very much. So you might be like, how, how does this work? How are you, how do you do your business? Easy peasy, I'll just show you. Now, if you have belt, obviously under your belt. For me, it's actually really great. I can still have this tied up in the back and take this off. Or if I have it loosey goosey, I can really easily take it off, but you just shimmy your shoulders off like so, and then off it goes like pants. Easy peasy. And then right back on up and onto the shoulders. I'm very glad that this was, it worked out to be loose enough for me to be able to do that. I don't love the idea of having to button and unbutton these every time. So, it's very good for me that it worked out this way. Lastly, I wanted to finish up by showing you that I did indeed finish painting the mushroom and it matches my earrings and my bandana and it's very cute. I'm a big fan. And then also I figured just in case anybody happens to want to try to do something similar to this, here are the measurements. I have them here in inches, screen grab if that's what you need, or here in centimeters. It should be pretty dang close to what my finished garment turned out to be. So keep in mind that is finished garment that is not including seam allowance. No seam allowance, no hem, no nothing in this. It's just the finished size that it ended up on me. Now I am 5'4", so if you're a little bit taller or shorter than that, then you're probably gonna wanna make it taller or shorter. And vice versa, my hips are about 45 inches around. My total width here of 27 plus 27 means that I have about nine inches of ease here. That's a lot of ease. So if you would like to be not quite so loosey goosey, absolutely take it in if you need. You know, I just wanted to give you guys the bare bones of what I came up with in the end, if that's a good jumping off point for you. All right, have a lovely day.